Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today for our 24th session, we'll be covering the names of Al-Jawad and Al-Manan, uh, names that have the meanings of the magnanimous and the bestower. So uh, there is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that uh, states that Allah is magnanimous or Jawad. And he loves those who are magnanimous and giving. He loves excellent moral character and detests meanness. And uh, one thing we can glean from this is very much so uh, you see this in applied to other attributes. Um, you see where the Prophet said that Allah is beautiful and loves beauty uh, and so many different things that Allah loves those who are just. Um, Allah loves those who, you know, return uh, back to Allah, all these different things. So we see the names of Allah um, the, the attributes of Allah um, and how Allah loves when those are acted upon or manifested upon or um, utilized in some different way uh, that help uh, Muslims, help the believers to uh, be able to guide their own moral compasses, to be able to help the world around them. So uh, they're not just ordinary individuals, but they act upon the divine attributes uh, of Allah um, in, in, in the spirit of those. And so seeing this as a continuing thread that any name of Allah that we see lifted up, uh, there's a wisdom of what can we as humans do to act on this name? And part of it is to try and live out these names in certain ways uh, in our own respective and created worlds here. And so Allah is magnanimous and loves those who are magnanimous in their giving. So for us to also be generous and, and giving in abundance. And so there's different names of Allah that relate to uh, this concept of giving and cl clearly show us how Allah gives to us. Uh, we've covered some of these already, um, that there's Al-Karim, who's the most generous, who gives above and beyond what is expected or even imagined. Um, you have Al-Wahhab, uh, the bestower of gifts, who gives without any compensation. Uh, you have Ar-Razak, who is a prov the provider, um, who has apportioned for us everything that benefits us in this world and in the next, inshallah. And then uh, these names teach us to reflect upon the blessings uh, that are not just in our lives as well, but also uh, with respect to the source of these blessings. Because um, sometimes we take for granted some things and we just say, oh, it's a given. Like it is just a given that I am in a space that I can breathe clean air. It's a given that I can just get up and walk uh, in the morning and not have to worry about having to uh, get with the challenges of mobility or anything like that. It's just a given that I'll wake up and I'll see uh, the world around me or I'll have eyesight, different things like that. Um, or it's a given that I'll open my fridge and there's something there to eat. So thinking upon not just these blessings, the tangible blessings, but thinking upon the source, reflecting upon where are these blessings coming from and attributing a source to them. And so uh, Allah is also, in addition to these names of giving, Allah is also Al-Jawad and Al-Manan, which highlight further the degree to which Allah constantly gives to us. So we see in the attributes of Allah, um, and this should help us in how we conceptualize Allah, um, because a lot of times we grow up thinking uh, Allah is is you know uh, is an entity is 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 a deity that we we are just to be uh, afraid from and not look back towards and just be operating from a mode of fear. Um, and instead we see Allah in our lives involved very intimately. And by highlighting at least five of these names that, that connotate giving uh, shows that Allah has a genuine concern uh, for our well-being and our welfare. Uh, but oftentimes we don't, we don't know because we don't attribute uh, each and every single thing that we see in our lives, even the most mundane things, to Allah. So these names help us cultivate that God consciousness that inshallah is the object of fasting and which we are doing in the in this month, especially in the last 10 days here, that uh, the Quran states the objective of fasting that has been prescribed for you, that you may become, become God conscious. And it's hard to become fully God conscious if we are not aware of even the most uh, minuscule things in our lives and being able to associate those uh, with Allah and by the permission of Allah. And so Al-Jawad uh, is the magnanimous. It comes from the Arabic root, which has these meanings of plentiful or uh, magnanimity, uh, as well as uh, fullness. And so uh, this hadith 
um, states uh, that, that we have here states that Allah's hands are full, uh, not literal hands, but Allah's hands are full um, in, in the metaphor, uh, that fullness isn't diminished by his giving day and night, and that this is something that continues to flow. Uh, and so Allah's giving is like that heavy rain that falls um, and nourishes everything that, that, is, that is within its, uh, within its reach, um, but it doesn't have a uh, a ceasing in a sense. Rain does cease eventually, but this doesn't have a ceasing and, and much more. Um, and so uh, the blessings that we have honestly rain upon us every single day, but we might not notice, as I mentioned, from the air that we breathe to our ability to move. Uh, Al-Jawab is the one who is magnanimous in both spirit and in giving, uh, even if we're not in the best spiritual state. Even if we are uh, in a state of deep sin, uh, we're, we're, we might be across the spectrum. We might be uh, living very saintly lives. We may be uh, on the opposite side where we are completely off the uh, beaten path. But what, we, what we're seeing is that Allah's favors don't stop upon us. Of course, Allah's favors will, we believe, will increase in different ways. But uh, Allah does still provide these favors that is still magnanimous to us, um, even, even wherever we might be. Um, because like I said, that, that air will continue to be there, that, you know, different, different spaces. There, there's so many little mundane things that still exist, that still give us a chance. The fact that we still have those opportunities is in fact itself uh, a sign of this magnanimous uh, and, and generous attribute. And so if we simply reflect on everything that we have, uh, or even a portion of it, and not just everything we have, like, oh, this is my clothes, either this, think about just ponder with, sit with, uh, whenever you're praying or whenever you have a chance to be able to just take some, take five away from the world, reflect upon just what is around you, what is on the inside, what is on the outside, what's the state of affairs around, uh, and be able to reflect on all of this. Uh, and if in doing so, uh, it, we can begin to appreciate this name, and in appreciating this name, we can begin to become more conscious of God. And so while this name manifests in every moment, we can truly see it more clearly when we are patient uh, or in solace in times of difficulty. We think about the example of Hajar, uh, the example of the prophet Ayyub, um, where in immense difficulty, uh, you know, they, they, they sought uh, patience and they, they were, they were uh, provided for in, in, in a magnanimous way. You know, with Hajar, you see, uh, you know, the, the stream or the well of Zamzam was was uh, was you know, provided in the in, in the midst of all all of what was going on. But the other thing is that this patience is also uh, it doesn't just mean that you sit up and you just sit down and see like okay I'm just gonna completely give up. No, you you also actively strive for um, you know your st strive for that which will help keep you going. So so there's patience is manifested, but it's a mindset there. Uh, with Ayub, you have of course his his. Uh, his wealth, his children, all of his his, his belongings, his treasures of this world were uh, were removed from him and taken from him, and he was uh, left in a state of sickness. But he didn't utter that which would curse uh, Allah, or that which would um, you know that which was unbecoming in that state. Uh, and so, for little things like that, uh, you see that the the abundance was restored, the 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 reward was restored, the properties and all that things were restored. But to be in that mindset, uh, it's not not just in, in, in a state of comatose, but you are in a mindset that uh, you, you don't offer, you don't drop lower than uh, what, what might be expected of you when that happens. And next name that we have here is uh, Al-Manan. Um, the root of Manan, which is Mim, Noon, Noon, it means to cut something and, and to leave with it. Uh, Allah says in the Quran that uh, in the Quran that you will have a never-ending reward, Ajrun uh, Laylu Mamnoon, that the Mamnoon has the same root meaning that is translated often as never-ending. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's never uh, being taken away or it's uninterrupted. And Al-Manan is an intensified form of that root um, that, that means to give freely and to, uh, to be, uh, give liberally, um, as well as to do someone a favor, which is usually requested because favors are things that we that we need or favors are things that people need and so are requested or when they're given uh, they're seen very much in a positive light and so the Quran speaks of favors in many different ways uh, we see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is mentioned as being sent essentially kind of as a favor in the same breath uh, so Allah has different favors for different categories of people and it may seem odd because we sometimes limit favors to that which we can tangibly see that which uh, is material um, and we only see those sometimes with wealth or status 
uh, as favored um, that, oh, like, you know, obviously these people are favored, like because of the cars they drive or the neighborhoods that they live in or their salaries or all these different things. But uh, what, what, what is important to note is that the material wealth, the, uh, that, that, that aspect here, the status, uh, it, it, it doesn't reflect the spiritual status of Allah. They may be favored in this life, but uh, we, we don't, Allah is only the judge of what their status is in the next life. Uh, we see this in the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the, in the story of the Sirah, where, uh, where the second Khalifa, Umar an, comes to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after he's staying in the masjid. Uh, he has a, uh, it takes a month-long sabbatical from his, uh, from his spouses, and he's in the masjid, and, and Umar goes to visit him and sees, you know, the poverty and the destitution that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is living in and saying, and, and starts to cry and says that, you know, the kings of Persia and of Rome and all these different places have, uh, you know, treasure rooms and have throne rooms and have all this stuff. And the Prophet Sallallahu is here sitting with uh, a pot and on a, you know, uh, on a uh, leather, you know, cot with like, you know, stripes on his back because of the, uh, the leather and is in pure poverty. And the Prophet Sallallahu says is that they've been given uh, what, what's been, what, what their, their uh, hereafter has been expedited for them in a the sense that they're, um, they've been given the reward of this world um, and that this, uh, the next world is, will, will be provided for them. So the favors of Allah do not, uh, in this world, their, their wealth does not indicate that that is the only mean of a favor. The favor is something that is also translated to the hereafter. And so when Allah refers to his man or his favor, it is also related to the hereafter, which is an uninterrupted blessing related to other worldly life. And so our submission to Allah is not only a favor that we're doing to the Prophet, it's not a favor, it's not a favor that we're doing to the Prophet um, because in the Quran it's listed up that this is uh, your submission is not um, for the Prophet because the Prophet is not in need of our Islam for his salvation, but our submission is to Allah as a favor uh, because uh, to Allah it's a favor um, from Allah, because ultimately it's what we need. Um, so thinking about the gratitude, the fact that you you were uh, you were whether you're born or you became a Muslim or whatever it was, however you entered Islam, sometimes we take that for granted. Sometimes we don't see that as a favor, or we see that as a blessing. So thinking about that as well. Uh, and so um, the greatest favor from Allah ultimately is paradise and a reward that, re relatively speaking, if it's an unending reward that never ceases, uh, we really do very little to be able to attain that uh, in, in comparison. So thinking about the reward for the little that we do to be bestowed something like that. And so how do we live with these names in closing? Uh, we wanna first and foremost, as uh, was looked up in the hadith in the beginning, we wanna be magnanimous. Allah is magnanimous and loves uh, those who are magnanimous. We want to be magnanimous and flowing with our spirit, our gifts, our wealth, uh, anything that we have to be generous with that and to, to give to the world around uh, and to ourselves as well, to, to, to be loving to ourselves, but to not to an excess. So to be in that in, in, in a state where we are generous with ourselves, with our family members, with the people we love and the world around us, with the non-human uh, you know, creation around us, uh, but in moderation. And we wanna reflect on the material gifts and the emotional gifts, but also be grateful for the spiritual gifts. Sometimes we take advantage of the fact that we may be able to recite the Quran. We may be able to do the Salah. And there's people who are uh, in prison that, that are converting to Islam and that become Muslims and uh, they are not able to even uh, access these basic things and they would do anything to be able to just know what, it's, uh, what it means to hold the Quran and read what it says or to be able to say the Salah with, uh, you know, without interruption. And so thinking about the little gifts that we have uh, that, that we can be grateful for and how Allah has made these as favors. Um, ponder over the favor uh, and the example of the Prophet Sallallahu who is given to us as, a, as not just a mercy for all of humanity, but also a guide. So thinking about uh, how, what's our relationship with Prophet Sallallahu uh, beyond just a historical figure? Do we have a living relationship? Uh, and don't be a person who constantly reminds people of the favors that you do for them. Um, inshallah, we, we want uh, to, how Allah has been given us these favors and, and, and does so um, without the constant reminder that all of this is from Allah. It should be upon us to recognize. Um, but Allah gives and, and, and gives freely and, and, and gives without uh, asking anything kind of in return. And, and it's, it's upon us to, uh, to acknowledge that. So uh, we ask Allah to uh, allow us to be people who uh, act in a similar way, to be magnanimous uh, with others, to be able to be generous with others, to be able to uh, provide 
um, for others and bestow upon others, but also to continue to be magnanimous to us, to continue to be bestowing upon us uh, and to allow us to be people who are seen not just uh, in given favors from Allah, but being favored by Allah, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.